everyone, it's Drew here from Novena, and today I'd like to talk to you about neck pain, and specifically the pain that we experience when, for example, we wake up from a really good sleep, and for some unknown reason we can no longer turn our head in one direction or the other, and it's significantly painful. And I want to talk to you about what that is, and also how we go about trying to eliminate and remove the pain so that we can return to a normal, pain-free, full range of motion function, okay? This is something that's really very common, um, and I personally, for myself, have, um, have experienced it many times over the recent years, where I wake up, um, or, you know, sometimes I've had a small slip the day before, and the next day I wake up, um, and then I can no longer really move my neck in the ways that I want to, and it's really painful in some of those instances. So over the last few years, I've had a lot of opportunity to trial and test and figure out what could be causing this and also how to try and reduce the amount of pain and discomfort that I'm in in the moment and also then reduce the likelihood of it occurring again in the future. So we're going to touch on a few of those things today. Um, recently, I've been sending out a lot of uh, information to you guys about pain science, about questioning the pain that you're, ex you're experiencing. Um, so that we get to understand it a little bit better, talking about how pain is a learned experience, how we can't always trust the pain signaling that we are experiencing, um, and also how it, pain doesn't necessarily relate to the degree of dysfunction. In this instance, the, the topic that we're talking about today with neck pain, when there's no previous injury and there's not really a reason for this to be occurring, and yet it's occurring anyway, this is one of those instances where the problem itself, the physiological problem, is really, really quite small. Um, and it's not dangerous, and yet the amount of pain that we experience from this is really substantial and really significant in a lot of instances. So what is it? Trigger points. Trigger point science is something that's coming more to the fore of manual therapy uh, research and pain science research in recent years. And it's absolutely fascinating. And trigger points, without getting into too much detail, uh, are very small, microscopic issues within the muscle that, again, are not really threatening to the health of the body or threatening to the health of, health of the muscle, but they create like tiny little pockets of um, metabolic waste buildup, and the body reacts to that, the nervous system and the brain reacts to that really strongly, and it signals a lot of pain for something that's very, very tiny. And that's just part of the, the first piece of what makes this tricky. When we wake up with a stiff neck and we can't move, we tend to go directly to where we feel the pain, which is in the neck. Okay? We tend to want to move it and try and work it out by moving it or massage. A lot of manual therapists will go directly for the neck and try to find the problem in the neck. And that's a really common phenomenon known as chasing pain. And it's something that we actually want to step out of. So today in this video, I'm going to encourage you guys to explore quite substantially and in areas that you don't necessarily think could be related to the neck. So I would encourage you to sort of suspend your disbelief for a little while and explore this with me as we go because it's something, again, that I've experienced over the last recent years and working on these points has really provided significant relief relatively quickly for me. So I hope it does the same for you. So, with trigger points, they're very, very tiny, which in and of itself means that they're going to be challenging to find, period. It means that as we scan through the body, we're going to have to go quite um, sequentially through each muscle and each area, and we're going to have to stop at regular intervals, very small intervals, to see what we can find. Because sometimes it can be the tiniest little adjustment to our position and to where we place one of these guys, um, or a golf ball or something that you might have at home, a tennis ball. It might be the smallest change in where we place this that unlocks uh, the experience of releasing that uh, trigger point or at least working on that trigger point. So the first thing is they're very small. Second thing that uh, relates to us chasing pain is that trigger points tend to signal referred pain. What that means is where we feel the pain is not actually where the trigger point is. There are maps that will tell you sort of generalized areas and ways in which the body will pass that information and refer that pain 
to the neck. Um, and they should be used as general guidelines. They're not going to hold true for all scenarios, all people, and all instances, okay? So hold them as guidelines, but remember that it's more about exploring than following a determined recipe for removing this type of pain. Um, one of the other things that um, we're going to do is we're going to use, use this, like I've mentioned already. You can, if you don't have anything um, designed for kind of self-massage, that's okay. You can use a golf ball or a tennis ball, something with a good amount of density. The more density it has, the slower you'll have to move. Um, this, in, this one in particular is a rad roller. It's one of my favorite um, self-massage tools because it's, the, it's just the perfect kind of density and the perfect size. Um, but you guys use whatever you have at home, okay? One of the things, one of the muscles that we will tend to, will start with is one that you might already be familiar with and you might have heard about and it's levator scapulae and it gets implicated in a lot of um, pain syndromes in the shoulder girdle and the neck in general. Um, it's something that we're going to check in with and, and it's located, we want to, we want to focus our work on the insertion of it, which is around the superior angle of the scapula. So if you reach over the shoulder girdle, you're looking for the top medial corner, so the corner of the shoulder blade that's closest to the spine and closest to the top of the shoulder. So around there, in general, that's a pretty good spot for us to work anyway, because a lot of us uh, tend to have trigger points in and around that area. So when you are either leaning up against a wall or you can position yourself on the floor and you just need to transfer your weight carefully to it, you want to place it around that uh, superior angle of the scapula and you can find a spot and sink in and stay. A lot of the work when it comes to trigger points is not so much how um, much you're moving, it's more pointed to finding this, the particular spot itself and staying there for a good couple of minutes. Another thing about trigger points, as well as being referrers of pain, when you find one of them, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's all there is to the pain that you're experiencing. Multiple trigger points could be contributing to pain in the same area, but those trigger points might be further away from one another than you might think. Okay, so look at the more, more um, distal portion of, or sorry, the, the uh, insertion of levator scapulae. That's one of the areas that we tend to find trigger points associated with neck issues. In addition to that, there's a muscle called the, or abbreviated to the SPS, and serratus posterior superior is the full name of that muscle. It's a muscle that we don't tend to talk too much about, and yet it generally contributes to a lot of our discomfort and pain in the neck. It's a little bit more medial than the insertion of levator scapulae. So if we go from that insertion point and we move medially, we're also thinking of deeper fibers. So it take a little bit more time to sink in there and you'll be finding probably that the majority of you will experience uh, a significant amount of sensation there. Now, when you find a trigger point, things to look for include uh, immediate resolution of the intensity of pain that you're feeling. That might happen and you might automatically think, wow, okay, that's the spot and all of a sudden it's gone when I put pressure on it. When you release the pressure, it should probably come back. You might also go the opposite way. You might experience an intensifying of the sensitivity or the sensation that you are experiencing in your neck. You might be pressing on that spot and you might directly feel that transference or referral of pain to your neck and you think, okay, found it, got it. Another thing that might happen is when you press on it, uh, you might notice that the muscles around there start to um, twitch or we, we tend to call it fasciculations, these small range little activations uh, of the muscle tissue and it kind of feels like the skin and the, and the muscles around that spot are kind of trying to jump away from that pressure, okay? You want to be able to comfortably breathe into the intensity that you're uh, pressing into that point. You don't want it to be too significant and in fact it's no better to go really strongly into a point than it is to go with a medium amount of pressure. So I would stick with the medium amount of pressure because it, it provides the same results, okay? Another set of muscles that we're going to talk about um, relates to a little bit further down the back actually. 
and it's the semispinalis muscles, both of the thoracic spine and the cervical spine, and also longissimus muscles of the cervical spine. Okay, so we're looking right next to the spine. When you lie down on whatever it is, whatever your self-massage tool is, start very close to the spine. Try to avoid direct pressure on it, but we're looking somewhere um, around the thoracic region, just next to the spine, and we want to explore all the way up to around about the CT junction, or where the cervical spine and the thoracic spine meet. Then we're going to come laterally, just a little bit further away from the spine, and go back down, okay? And you're going to do that a few times. And what you might notice, in fact, is that you experience points down in here, down in the upper thoracic region, that correlate directly to your neck pain, okay? And again, if you find and when you find those points, try to stay there. There's no real need to move around on those points. Hang out there, spend a little bit of time, a couple of minutes, and then usually you'll experience some kind of change in the sensitivity of that spot or the intensity of that spot and that will signal time for you to move on to the next spot or keep exploring through the rest of the shoulder girdle to see if you can find uh, something else, see if you can find another trigger point. One of the things you can also do that will help you identify if you've found one of the trigger points associated with the pain that you're experiencing um, is to do a little bit of movement while you're pressing into that point. So, for example, if you're lying down on this guy and you've got it sinking into a muscle that you think is partially contributing to that pain and discomfort, start to move through a little bit of rotation through the cervical spine, especially through the side that is giving you the majority of pain. So, go ahead and move it in that direction and what you will notice is if you're pressing on one of those trigger points, usually it will give you instantly more range of motion when you're pressing on it. Again, if you release that pressure and do it again, you'll probably notice that there's a resurgence of that intensity because there hasn't been enough time to uh, facilitate the release of that trigger point. The next thing that I want you guys to know when you're doing this kind of self-massage work is that it's not necessarily going to give you 100% results the first time. Some of these trigger points have taken years to develop. So, sometimes they've taken a couple of days and a certain set of scenarios to come together and, and it might resolve after one little session of doing this kind of self-massage work. That would be the ideal scenario and would be wonderful if we all experienced that. However, the suggestion would be to repeat this work if you're in acute pain for the neck right now do this work multiple times a day, but don't overwork the points. So when you find a spot, hang out on it for a couple of minutes and then come back to it later on in the day, provide a little bit more pressure, a little bit more weight, and then do that a couple of times each day and work on consecutive days. Another thing that I want you to then think about is even if you're not experiencing uh, acute pain right now, regularity in this work will also decrease the likelihood that this will occur repeatedly. Okay, so maybe once a week you get involved in doing some of this self-massage work and working those points that you know contribute to um, your neck stiffness and neck pain on a daily basis. So make it consistent. Generally, after a few sessions, four or five sessions, you'll notice a significant change in both the range of motion that you have and the pain that you feel. It should be significantly decreased. Okay. Um, Particularly challenging trigger points uh, or particularly nasty trigger points will require more work. Maybe weeks, maybe even months. And again, once you find that there's some kind of a change in the trigger point sensation, it's a really good idea to implement some kind of regular self-massage protocol so that you avoid, you have a greater likelihood of avoiding resurgence of this neck stiffness and neck pain in the future. Okay. There are also exercises that you can do to start to use those muscles that are causing your um, pain a little bit more frequently. Neck exercises are much better 
the next stretches. So don't necessarily think about stretching, even though it feels good in those scenarios, it doesn't actually do a whole lot to remove the pain. So think more about using the muscles than stretching them. We can create another video for that if you'd like. Let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd like to see. Otherwise, I hope that this video has been helpful and informative, and I hope it helps to contribute to less neck pain and less stiffness, um, and that you guys get to use this not only when you're in, in pain to help you relieve the pain, but also as a regular self-care regimen so that you avoid pain in the future. If you want to know more about what we're up to at Navina, check out the website in the link below. We've got a, a, a specifically uh, a Move Well, Feel Better retreat coming up in Costa Rica, and we're going to take you through all of this kind of stuff and more as it relates to pain science and getting you guys out of pain. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, it's Drew from Navina. Thanks so much for watching.